hello again and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And here we are halfway through February. Woo we are and clearly thinking we're spring. in springtime. It's uh, a thing. We kind of look like it should be St. Patty's Day. So maybe I'm, we're I'm working we're... optimistically towards That's that right. goal. That's right. Yeah, it is pretty um, much a month. Yeah, it is because today's the March 16th. 17th, so right? A month, a month from tomorrow. Yeah. I'll Thursday's my birthday. So, so what's yours on the 18th? Yeah. February 18th? Yeah. Hmm. So, so what's that make you, Pisces? Mm, Aquarius. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Actually, Aquarius and born in 1972. So the last day of the dawning of an age of Aquarius. Oh, Whatever that might be. Whatever mean. that means, right? <laughs> um, so Carla and I both came with same subject matter we today. I'm indeed. sure. Well, I'm not sure that everybody's heard of everything because everybody, you know, who knows. Um, in last November's elections... There was an anomaly. I'm going to go with that because we don't know what it is. In Wyndham, um, there was a regular election, you know, and Wyndham does the ballot machines just like everybody, most towns in New Hampshire do. I think there's some small towns that still just manually count their ballots. Dix, like Dixville, Dixville Notch, Notch doesn't all actually 12 use people. a machine. <laughs> but Wyndham. Um, and... One of the Democrats filed for a recount, as is allowed by law, because they were within, I can tell you, um, they were within, like, 24 votes oh, so of close. The, the, the bottom Republican. Right? Okay. So they were well within their right to request a recount. Um, I didn't attend at that recount, but I think I was at a recount later that afternoon, which is why I, there's, like, banter that was going on. Uh, that day about what may or may not have happened. Um, But they did the recount. And for those of you who have never participated in a recount, they literally show a a representative of the Republican candidate and the Democrat candidate, or every candidate, I guess, because in this case there was eight candidates. There could have been eight of them there, but the only two that are really usually are the bottom ones, you know, uh, the top of one side and the bottom of the other. And um, they literally show you every ballot. And you and they say, you know, this one's for Sodi and this one's for St. Laurent. And if you don't think it's true, you just say, no, I disagree. And they set it aside. Then at the end of the recount, there's a pile of ones that were set aside. Um, sometimes they're just, sometimes there's questions about the intent of the voter. Say, say somebody on the ballot fills in the dots very clearly on everything except for one race and puts a circle. Well, did they mean to fill in that circle? Right, so there's questions. Right. But it usually comes down to one or two ballots. And to be honest, in my experience, I've never seen, I mean, maybe if you did a whole statewide recount, there would be a number. But like in a state rep district, if the vote changes five in either direction, that's probably generous, right? Then that's how it goes. It rarely, very rarely does the outcome of an election get changed. Unless you're doing a recount because you were in a write-in for the Libertarian yes. Party yes. and they just didn't count any yeah, of your right. write-ins. And that's, and that's... <laughs> so my experience is very different yes. to yours. I'm very skeptical about I'm the skeptical. system. skeptical. I just try to figure out where the problems are. In I've, that I've case, had my own negative right. experience. But in the case like that where an entire group of write-ins weren't counted that literally would be human error that was human error right. we think it was and, and i don't, I think, don't think it was intentional right. and i was gonna say and somebody who's normally just you know doing this and doing this and then there was but here's the other thing but had i not been very organized and had known what was supposed to happen right. you would have and i was known. just like blindly going into this I, right. one, wouldn't have known, two, wouldn't have thought to do the right count, and three, would not have actually gotten the right result. Right. So, so, so there's, you know, I mean, I think in any, anything in life, nothing is 100% infallible. You know, like, there's always some oddity that can happen. You know, some, that, se- that obviously, and live, my experience is in Manchester, I know I've seen, um, it wouldn't have changed the outcome of an election, but I know there was one instance, um, in 2016 where at the polls i think it was ward it was either ward three or ward five i think it was ward five the person counting the the manual ballots so the the write-ins completely did it completely wrong because when the machine when you scan your ballot through the machine if you're voting for all the races on with the dots and you write in say for county attorney 
it counts all the other dots. It just doesn't do anything for county attorney. In Ward, in, I think it was Ward 5 in 2016, they counted an extra vote for everybody right, on like these yeah. 38 ballots. Right. And it was caught at the city clerk's office because they were like, wait a minute, everybody got 38 write-ins? Like, not just the president and not just the U.S. Senate, right, but yeah. everybody. Right, right, and then right. they realized, they went back and looked and they were like, oh yeah, that... So then they retrained right. those people because that wasn't correct. So basically in Wyndham, so the Democrat asked for the recount. They went and they went to do the recount. Yes. So then, dun, 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 yep. uh, the results come out. Yep. And it very strangely yes. is that there were 300 miscounts for every single Republican yeah. in Wyndham. So, real so there were four candidates yep. who were Republican yep. and all four of them were shorted, were in shorted the... 300 votes. Right. Now that seems weird. Right, and it wasn't dead on 300. Well, it wasn't exactly 300, but it, in my theory, it is 300. Two, um, one gained 297 in the recount, one gained 299, one gained 303, one gained 298. Which, in my mind, yeah. it's probably 300. And what that. The, but if you add all of those together, do they make 1,200? Is it 300 times four? Give or take. Oh, not exactly. Not no. exactly. No, but okay. what I th figure is the one that gained 297, there's that 300, and then he lost three in the recount. And then the 299, there were 300, and lost one in the recount. And the guy who got 303 had 300 and gained three. In the, you know, like, I think it was all based on probably three. All this, all the ideas, whether it's a machine glitch, I doubt a machine glitch is going to randomly be off by 299, 303. Like, it, that just seems, it would be, I could see, I mean, I don't think, but it would be a same number. Um, the, if it was a mathematical error on the, at the polls, somebody who can't do math kept adding, you know, Eight and five and getting nine. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, it would be 300. It would be the same mathematical mistake. Um, and then I, I do have my doubts or at least my suspicions that perhaps there was an error made at the recount. So, so which would also be a flat number. So they filed for the recount. They went, you know, and you go to the office and everyone sits there and it's, yep. you know, we, we go through the ballots and yep. you count they them. They do little hashtags. Tags, one, two, three, four, five. five one, two, three, four, you know. five. So, um, you know, like like the days in prison. And, um, and so they find these 300 votes for the four Republicans. And then the AG's office. But even weirder. The person who challenged, the, so yes, the the Democrat lost ninety nine votes, which again in my mind is like a hundred, and gained one. You know what I mean? Lost a hundred, a flat hundred, but gained one in the recount. The number, the it's so bizarre. <laughs> it's very well, weird. It's very weird, and it makes me if everybody it, it, it doesn't instill any any no, trust there's, for there's me in this system. There's obviously a problem. <laughs> There's either a problem with the machines, which if there was a problem with that machine, was there a problem with the machine in my ward? I only lost by 60 or 70 votes. You know, like I don't, I, I would never have requested a recount for 60 or 70 votes because I've done recounts. I'm not picking up 60 or 70. I but, would. <laughs> no, but, no, but in, I don't even know if I was with, I was probably within the range to do it, but you wouldn't, you don't request a recount unless you, there's something to make you think the chain outcome would be different. In the write-in example, you knew that there was something off. In a regular ballot, if I'm only behind by four votes, well, heck, I might be able to get four write-in. You know, like, I don't know. So now the problem, and I, it's, I feel bad because a lot of people are outraged. And I think part of the reason why so many people are outraged, if we just try to focus on New Hampshire, is that other states have really bad ways of voting. You know what I mean? They have crazy stupid. We in New Hampshire generally have a fairly good process. So, but, so I, w I have a question. I hear everyone say that all the time. Everything's different everywhere else, but New Hampshire is uniquely special. Oh, I don't know if we're you know, uniquely special, but um, and and everyone's like, no, trust the system, trust the system. And I'm like, why? Well, why do we think we're so much better I than think, everyone? Okay, else? let's let's go back before this election. The reason we feel fairly confident that when I go into a polling place and fill out the dot and feed it into a machine 
if we hand count those ballots, the results are generally the same. In, in every instance up until this, I think there has never been a, 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 a change of this magnitude. So when you go in and you, you know, you're at on election night, they tell you you have 850 votes and on the recount you have 851. I trust the machine then, right? Um, and that's always been the case. It's not like we've just done one recount. We do recounts every year and the number doesn't change. I mean, it changes, but it doesn't change Again, it's you know, usually, they, they left an entire party or but, something. Right, but that was all manual stuff is what I'm getting at, is the changes in a recount, in my opinion, aren't from the machine making a mistake. It's from humans making a mistake. People don't fill in the dot or people vote for 12 or, you know. So now what do we do? Like everybody's outraged about this because it is peculiar. So now what do they do? The law in New Hampshire is pretty sp specific. Um, the candidates allowed to only file for one recount. So there's that. And it's spelled out that way. No mechanical, optical, or electric device shall be used in counting of the, in a recount. Um, so it's all manual. It's all we manual. Show, um, in no event off, shall yeah. a discrepancy result in a second recount for the same c candidate. Um, that seems strange. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. So, so, then, so if the law literally says, if you find something wrong, you're not allowed well, to double I, check it? Well, that's what I'm getting at. And that's then if you go great. into the, there, it says upon an order, this is another thing, under disposal of ballots, upon an order of the ballot law commission, the secretary of state shall produce the ballots for an inspection of the commission. Now the ballot law commission has their own, you know, ability to things. One thing I thought was interesting as I was reviewing this this morning is members of the ballot commission cannot make political contributions. Oh, I thought that, I was like, oh, well, that's, see, somebody thought that through and said that's probably <laughs> that a good one. Who, um, who, who, I don't who know who they, the ballot commission? Um, who are they? Like, how does I that work? No, I don't know if they're approved Ooh, by the executive some council. Some secret cabal know. that we don't know about that we can go research. I mean, I don't really think research. it's a super exciting position. Well, it seems like it's going to be, you know, uh, well, if election fraud becomes the, um, the, the way we do things in the banana in the, republic, then... The, uh, <laughs> under the ballot law commission, under their jurisdiction, appeals from recounts in there, it says, in no case may the ballot law commission order a second recount. So I'm like, okay. Then um, further in that same section, um, in no case may the ballot law commission order a second recount, same thing. The one line that did... Um, the last part of appeals from recounts that does make me go, well, there is some authority somewhere. Nothing contained in this paragraph shall be construed to bar any person, I, I assume any person, from recourse to the pre superior court on other questions within the jurisdiction of such court relating to the legality or regularity of general elections or results thereof. So I do think that someone, which I don't believe anybody may have done at this point, can file a, a case in the superior court and say something's not right. We we would like you to look at it. Um, we. I, I mean, I'm, I do know Senator Bob Guida has been yeah. posting a yeah. lot about this and sort of. There's doing a lot updates. of discussion going on. Yeah, so it seems like people are sort of like, what's going on? Yeah. And you know, I think it will behoove us and and, and it behoove the state. It would behoove all the voters. voters if the AG actually takes this seriously yeah. and says, you know what. Regardless of what, 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 why don't we actually investigate yeah. this in a way that we get to the or, bottom of the issue and explain it in a way that seems yeah. plausible and believable and, and right? And I'm to even, us. I mean, I'm, I'm skeptical but hopeful that they could find the error. Like, I would be very happy to have them go back and say, somebody can't add eight and five and come up with 13. You know, some somebody literally- Now, now you had said before the show that because of, uh, as I said, the prison numbers. Yeah. So Tammy's oh, theory so, is- uh, Well, this wasn't my theory, but this was brought up that, like I said, I was doing a recount for someone in Manchester, I think, I don't even remember, that I think, which was after this recount, or maybe it was the next day. And somebody, so the way they, they have this tally sheet, right? And I always chuckle because I used to own a print shop. So I look at print things and think, God, who thought that was a good plan? So instead of just like having titles at That's the That's how I feel about government. About the, <laughs> yeah, the titles at the tops of these rows of columns where they're going to put these little hashtags, they have the title on like the first section. And I so imagine in an Excel spreadsheet, A1 isn't allowed to put 
hashtags in, but A2 is and B1 is. Mm -hmm. So it was like, it's not an actual grid. It's weird. So I, and I remember even before this happened thinking, well, that's just stupid because then when you're counting, if, if the column on the B line was five rows of five, you'd know those were 25s, but the first row would only have 20. So somebody said, were there three pages? No, but okay. it goes down a lot. Okay. So because, what if so that wouldn't explain because that would only be that first what if cell, there, right? Well, right, but that's five. So if there were six, maybe there were two pages because when I don't know. I'm just saying if there were sixty lines. So so I mean the bottom it's line like is there's something. Can didn't... the AG please look yeah. into this in a robust fashion and come back with some kind of report that we can go? Okay, that makes sense. And because I, mean, I think part of the disconnect and the frustration people that people feel are feeling is you know we, we're like well clearly that seems weird and suspicious. Yep. I mean I think you'd have to be an alien not to you know from be outer at space least concerned to be like what because yeah. it's it's because it's such a round number across. It is four strange. candidates that just you know so, seems weird so the ag i believe at one stage said well no we've done enough we're just going to leave it yeah. here but then you were saying i thought you i think read that they were requesting because like at this point how do you recreate something that's gone you know what I mean? they have um i believe the mem they requested the memory cards from the machines in okay. windom yep because in which uh, the reason i think that I, this is recent is they were saying they would have to get different memory cards for the March town election because they can't reuse that card because now they're looking at it. I so mean, so they they can ask do that because then they can put that memory card in another machine and print a report and you know do that. They've requested I think the long um, tabulator reports which tells you know that's what they read to us on election night to say you know you got this many votes and you got this many votes. But there's other stuff. I'm sure in there there's it says how many of this type of ballot and how many of this and blah, blah, all that stuff. Um, I'm sure they requested, I think I re saw that they requested all the documentation from the polling location that they used to come up with the results. Um, I hope, I'm not 100% confident, that the recount sheets from the recount are also ma maintained or does the secretary of state's office not keep those because I they're, mean, I would assume so they I, keep I don't them know because though they because they're paper boxes but their I mean, decision you know, their decisions them. are final after that day unless you're challenging them so but you would think they I would know. have to keep them because if you, you can file a superior court right. claim someone's going to have to and and I think that isn't the government supposed to at least keep things for 5 years they, or uh, well I think like um, a document only, retention thing? I think after the um I think the ballots only have to be keep kept so, for like 60 days. But so they, being solution driven yes. and kind of being like, okay, well, fine. So we've identified a problem. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, there are millions of people in America who do not have a lot of confidence yep. in the electoral system yep. currently. Um, so I think it behooves us in New Hampshire to try and get to yep. the bottom of make this. Make it better. And to make it better. So the question becomes like, what are the things we can do? So one of the things that I was surprised about, you know, I do a lot of right to know I was going to say, you looked at it from a different point you know, the way and, than I And did. so with right to know, I was shocked, much like I'm shocked that all body cam footage, footage that available. police collect is exempt from right to know. So anyone who is working on right to know issues should help us fix that problem because basically right now we've just in now we just have roving spies walking around right. filming but we can't, but see, we the can't see the info right so i think that's a big problem but with regard to the election law any of this ballot stuff is also exempt from right to know and i'm like why would that be right. right so the new hampshire constitution as i say every week is supposed to be open transparent responsive and accountable to the people so it's like well let's do that, yep. right? So how do you get rid of suspicion? How do you get people to get on board and to say, yeah, actually, like I'm not an unreasonable person. If uh, if something makes sense to me, logically and rationally, I'll be like, you have convinced me, I believe you. So so I, this is what the way my brain works. You know, I look at things and think, okay, so we're, you know, because we are, uh, we do have a basis in law and that's where the problem in this case really lies is that there's no way for, the, it's very difficult for them to go back and it, because no, it's, nobody had any reason. Like, I don't think necessarily somebody maliciously didn't write it in, but now even prior to this election, I had been saying for the last couple of election cycles for a completely different reason 
that I always thought that after whatever the period of time after an election, whether that's 60 days, 90 days, a year, whatever number somebody decides, that anybody could go in and review the ballots. And I'd be perfectly okay with the Secretary of State's office charging a fee for that because there is work involved in reta- sure. pulling these out of things. You couldn't take them. You couldn't mark them. You could bring in a portable scanner and scan them all and go home and look at them till you're blue in the face. I thought, the reason I thought that is one, you could go back and you could manually count them and see, hey, wait a minute. I didn't get 60 less votes. Mm -hmm. That was before this. Now I think that's even more important because I think that people should be able to better understand how we come to these results. Because I know there's communities like Durham where there's college students. And are there places that are being manipulated by entities other than the candidates? Are there, does Durham get, you know, people. You don't don't even have to live in New Hampshire anymore to vote here. Well, that's what I mean. But I mean, like if if I went and looked at uh, uh, ballots in Durham and Hanover, and then I looked at ballots in a town that doesn't have any college students, and, you know, a fair number of polling locations, and you could see there is a distinct hey, wait a minute, these are all absentee ballots voting only for president or whatever the case may be. You could see that like, hey, the rest of New Hampshire has this percentage that does that. And you've got, you know, 20% of the people vote only for president everywhere else except for the college towns. But in the college towns, 80% of the people vote only for president. You know, there's anomalies. I just think it would be a curiosity. So so the thing is, data is always interesting, right? Right. So the more data we can make. (laughs) Well, but the more data you can make available that That is uh, auditable and impeachable and uh, you know, get some good minds and some, you know, thoughtful people on it, you, you, can actually improve the system by improving trust, right? So where the trust breaks down is we're in this system now where a lot of people, there's a lot of distrust. And instead of people kind of going, oh, allow me to open the kimono so that we can set aside this this issue it's like the it's like the rottener things seem the more people double down on being like no we're going to hide our secrets right and to my point is the the challenge we face with government is they can never admit they're wrong true and that is a flaw in the system, right? Because we all know as humans, we're all fallible. The the lady who counted the LP recounts, write-ins, right. wrong. It was a mistake. I get it, right? But that mistake actually would have had a pretty serious yeah. outcome, right? So we have to restore trust yes. by doing better. Yes. And that means being more open and being yes. more transparent and actually trying to address the concerns of people, instead of just saying, no, we're gonna double down on secrecy, on, you know, just just saying it doesn't matter or you're wrong or whatever. Let's actually try and fix these problems. So I do think if they made it, if somebody, if I had gotten elected, I would have put in a law to allow people to review the ballots after they're spent, you know, after they're dead ballots. I also think that somebody should put in a bill to, allow either the ballot commission or even the secretary of state's office if there is an anomaly or anything that they think is well i mean let's just say you know like what it's not 20 percent, so it doesn't meet the criteria it is within no it was more than 20 percent. like if there's a number you know they should be able to say we need this to be audited and then there should be a secondary process. And that process maybe would require all of the papers from the town cl- while it's still fresh. You know, recounts have to happen within 10 days or right. whatever. Yep. So maybe the audit process has to happen within, you know, 14 days after that. So that the town, everything's still kind of fresh because then when you talk to somebody who works- And you want a sense of urgency. I mean, we're talking about is. the people who represent you, right. right? We want that to be right. You want, if we're gonna have a representative government, you want it to be working right. So one thing I do want to say, just because skepticism is sometimes based on different things, Wyndham is a very Republican-leaning town. It, it does strike me odd. I don't know if the town if the town clerk is a Republican or not. Being a Republican town, I mean, I'm going to kind of guess, but it doesn't. Mm. But I'm just saying, 
if we're going to look at, you know, malice, I would have, if this was a Democrat leaning town where the Republicans lost 300 votes apiece, I, my, the little hair, spidey, I, my little spidey sense would be going off. In a Republican town where the Republicans were somehow impact, it's, it doesn't, you know, like if I'm my gut stuff, it's the wrong combination. Well, I mean, or you could say if you were looking at it Unless through a lens a of federal politics and for some people, I mean, I've certainly I watched some stuff where it seems suspicious to me based on on just math and like so little peaks and before people just voting, you know, one so way here's a that, that we can't be. we can't really look at this time, but it would be interesting. So if we had an audit process they could go back and recount the other races on those same ballots and see if there was a 300 vote down the whole Republican column, then that would be a machine problem, right? I mean, but if I still every other, think if, the fact that it was the four. It's strange. It's, if it was just the person in the recount, you know, like it's something, just, it seems really weird that it's wrong. across the board right. on And we don't know if it was this Republican Senate candidate. We don't know if it was the Republican, pre we don't know. So, because so, there's no way to go back and audit it, unfortunately. So we would say maybe, you know, hey, AG, do us a solid. Yep. Figure this out. You know, do a little report. Let us know. Let's let's solve these mysteries yep. so people don't have to be quite right. so There's skeptical. ways to fix things going forward. There isn't always ways to go back and really definitively always get an Right. Answer. I mean, I think a lot of times when we're trying to fix things going forward, we, make them we worse. just make them worse. And I think these could be... Easy changes, and I can't imagine why Democrats and Republicans wouldn't support it. I... The Democrats in Re Wyndham should want us. I mean, I mean, I hope that anyone who's an honorable politician, if there is such a clean. thing, you know, uh, would want clean elections. So I think this is a nonpartisan, bipartisan, totally yep. an issue that yep. everyone should get on board. Every Granite Stater should be on board with like free and fair and unimpeachable elections. So if any, buy Carlos book. No, right no, there. don't. No. Check out my book. Check out her book. I don't know what that means, why that is, but um, so. <laughs> See, if you let me finish my sentence, I, I would have done it the right say, way. If anybody <laughs> has any questions about the election laws or if they know of any stories in other places other than Wyndham or anything and they want to share them with us, they can email us at manchtalk at gmail.com. Otherwise, um, we'll be back next week and it'll be that much closer to spring. That's all. Thanks, guys. Bye.